emotional Sharon lost three half-siblings in a month. Shocking, singer and actress Sharon Cunetta expressed her sadness over the recent deaths of his three half-siblings. In her Facebook post, she said that she lost her half-sister and half-brothers in only a span of one month. She said, a month or so ago, I lost a half-brother, Danny. I was never particularly close to him, but there was no bad blood between us. About two weeks ago, I lost another half-brother, my above-brother's brother, Kuya Freddy. I felt worse about losing him as our daddy wanted nothing more than all his very many children to get along. Kuya Freddy and my mom had a falling out years ago. And, well, you know how fiercely protective I was of my parents. I regret that we never had the opportunity to make up and forgive each other in person, she continued. Sharon learned on Tuesday that her half-sister Ning passed away. However, she didn't mention the cause of the death. I received a message from my niece Jacette saying my half-sister, the last of the three siblings, children of one mother, my eighth Ning passed away, she shared. I never had the chance to talk to her in the past several months. You always think there is going to be a tomorrow until there are no more of it. My condolences to all there, our family, she said. I wish I could say more, but alas, these are private matters. All I can say is if I could have been there more, in more ways than one, I would have without any hesitation. It feels like so many are being taken away from me I pray this is it. At least for a long while. Danny. Freddie and Ninning are Sharon's siblings and their late father, former Pasay City Mayor Pablo Cuneta. Invite you to watch the video. President Dudert gives farmers and fishermen of Basil and P100 million worth of equipment to celebrate his 100 days in office. On President Rodrigo Dudert's 100 days of office, he distributed equipment to farmers and fishermen worth P100 million in the province of Basil and along with Agriculture Secretary Manny Pinal. The machinery included cassava granulation, corn mills, tractors, corn and rice seeds, fertilizers, seaweed farming tools and fiberglass fishing boats. Aside from the equipment, he was also able to provide interventions that are estimated to be worth P1 billion as he aims to focus on production of food and wiping out poverty on provinces. Upon the distribution People from Basilan burst into tears as they received the 70 units of the 1,000 fiberglass fishing boats together with engines, fishing nets, hooks and line. Meanwhile, the farmers were given first of the seven units of four-wheel drive tractors which will be used in farming of cassava and corn particularly in places affected by cocoa sap. President Dudert said that he vows to give more aid to areas which are affected by war that is between several armed groups and the government. Invite you to watch the video. Terror attack in Philippines prevented after Malaysian bomb expert arrested, an attempt by a terrorist bomb expert to attack Manila was prevented by the Philippine National Police, PNP, yesterday. Malaysian terrorist Mohamed Amin, who had a $17,020 or $600,000 Philippine peso bounty, was presented in a press briefing by Chief Sup Rolo Buzan acting director of the PNP Criminal Investigation and Detection Group, CIDG, last Monday. Amin was arrested at 4 a.m. on Saturday by joint operatives from the Anti-Transnational Crimes Unit, ATCU, of the CIDG and the PNP Intelligence Group in a raid in Quezon City. Bill Tilam, the owner of the house where Amin was staying, and Adnan Malakis were also arrested with him. Eight other tenants in the house are also being investigated. The CIDG believes all three had links with the Abisayaf group in Sulu, an extremist terrorist group in the Philippines. Authorities found a fragmentation grenade, several rounds of ammunition, various identification cards, a blueprint of a condo mall in Quezon City and a cellular phone. They refused to name the condo where Amin and others were arrested to prevent panic. Chief Sapt Obuzan said that the results of the police interrogation further strengthened their belief about Amin's plot to stage bombing attacks in Manila. Amin, who also goes by the names Asman, Akman Amin and Amin Aklam, is a bomb expert and is a subject of an arrest warrant for a murder case filed at the Regional Trial Court, RTC, in Jolo, Sulu. Amin will also be charged with violations of Article 78 of the revised Penal Code for concealing his true identity. On the other hand,
Talam was charged with obstruction of justice and harboring a fugitive or wanted person. Chief Sapt Obuzan said Amin had an alliance with the three suspected suppliers of arms to Abu Sayyaf and other political warlords in Zambonga, Basilan, Sulu, and Taitai areas. They were Jiriz Damona Isa, al Jamer Akar Ahmadin and Herban Sahibal, who were arrested in West Kram, San Juan City, last month. Invite you to watch the video. DSWD chief reacts to Duterte's statement. Says Duterte is open to deal with countries who will not treat us as little brown brothers. Recently, President Rodrigo Duterte made headlines once again after saying, I do not expect human rights, I do not expect Obama, I do not expect the EU to understand me. Do not understand me. And if you think it's high time for you to withdraw assistance, go ahead. We will not beg for it. This earned different reactions among senators, other public figures and netizens. But Social Welfare and Development Secretary Judy Tagwawalo communicated the underlying messages of President Rodrigo Duterte with regards to international relationships. In a press conference last Tuesday, October 11, she said, Ang message Nia, Duterte, is very clear, he doesn't want to deal with countries who treat us as mendicants who treat us as second-class citizens, who treat us like little brown brothers. But he's open to foreign relationships, to building new relationships on the basis of mutual benefit and non-interference in internal affairs. DSWD chief reacts to Duterte's statement. Says Duterte is open to deal with countries who will not treat us as little brown brothers. Invite you to watch the video, Duterte to meet with Emperor Akihito in Japan, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte will meet with Japanese Emperor Akihito when he visits Japan later this month, the Philippine Department of Foreign Affairs, DFA, said Wednesday, October 12. In a statement, the DFA said Duterte will visit Japan from October 25 to 27 upon the invitation of Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. During his visit, the President will meet with the Japanese Prime Minister. He will also make a state call on His Majesty Emperor Akihito of Japan, the DFA said. Duter's predecessor, former President Benigno Aquino III, also paid a state call on Emperor Akihito and Empress Michiko when Aquino visited Japan in June 2015. Months later, in January this year, the Japanese Emperor and Empress also visited the Philippines. The last known high-level meeting between the Philippines and Japan was in September when Duterte and Abe met on the sidelines of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations Summit in Vientiane, Laos. Back then, Abe praised Duterte and said he is very famous in Japan. Duterte's trip to Japan comes as he asserts an independent foreign policy that is distant from the U.S. and closer to China and Russia. Read, Why Duterte Needs to Act Like a Diplomat Before visiting Japan, Duterte will make a state visit to China from October 18 to 21 and also Brunei from October 16 to 18. Japan is a U.S. ally. Like the Philippines, Japan also has a territorial dispute with China. Invite you to watch the video. Report, two women say Donald Trump inappropriately touched them, after a video surfaced last week showing Donald Trump boasting in 2005 how he would kiss and rope women without consent. The GOP nominee insisted in Sunday's presidential debate that it was just locker room talk and, pressed repeatedly by CNN's Anderson Cooper, finally said that he had never actually taken the action he described. But on Wednesday evening, the New York Times published a report citing two women who described how the billionaire businessman had allegedly previously touched them inappropriately. Jessica Leeds, 74, told the Times that more than three decades ago the now Republican presidential nominee groped her on an airplane as she sat next to him. About 45 minutes after takeoff, she recalled, Mr. Trump lifted the armrest and began to touch her. According to Ms. Leeds, Mr. Trump grabbed her breasts and tried to put his hand up her skirt. He was like an octopus, she said. His hands were everywhere. She fled to the back of the plane. It was an assault, she said. Rachel Crooks described an incident in 2005 the same year the now infamous Access Hollywood tape was recorded, when she was a 22-year-old receptionist working in Trump Tower and encountered him in an elevator. Aware that her company did business with Mr. Trump, she turned and introduced herself. 
they shook hands, but Mr. Trump would not let go, she said. Instead, he began kissing her cheeks. Then, she said, he kissed me directly on the mouth. It didn't feel like an accident, she said. It felt like a violation. It was so inappropriate, Miss Crooks recalled in an interview. I was so upset that he thought I was so insignificant that he could do that. Both women say they came forward after hearing Trump deny at the debate he had ever followed through on the vulgar actions he described in detail in the tape. Both had also told family members and friends after the assaults occurred. I'm automatically attracted to beautiful, I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything, Trump said on the Access Hollywood recording. Grab them by the you can do anything, he continued, using vulgar slang for the female anatomy. Trump denied the women's accusations to the Times and threatened to sue the paper. You are a disgusting human being, he told Times reporter Megan Twohe. Trump's campaign put out a statement Wednesday evening from senior communications adviser Jason Miller after the story published. Miller again denied the accusations and claiming the paper was trying to help his opponent. Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton. This entire article is fiction, and for the New York Times to launch a completely false, coordinated character assassination against Mr. Trump on a topic like this is dangerous. To reach back decades in an attempt to smear Mr. Trump trivializes sexual assault, and it sets a new low for where the media is willing to go in its efforts to determine this election. It is absurd to think that one of the most recognizable business leaders on the planet with a strong record of empowering women and his companies would do the things alleged in the story, and for this to only become public decades later in the final month of a campaign for president should say it all. Both women in the Times story said they were backing Clinton's presidential campaign, and Crook said she had donated less than $200 to both Clinton and President Obama's campaigns. Hillary Clinton's campaign responded to the allegations on Wednesday night. This disturbing story sadly fits everything we know about the way Donald Trump has treated women. These reports suggest that he lied on the debate stage and that the disgusting behavior he bragged about on the tape are more than just words, Clinton Communications Director Jennifer Palmieri said in a statement. Another BuzzFeed report out Wednesday described how when Trump owned the Miss Teen USA pageant he would walk into the dressing room when contestants, some as young as 15, while they were changing and told them, don't worry, ladies, I've seen it all before. The latest accusations come as many Republican officials have abandoned Trump's campaign less than a month before Election Day. The Republican National Committee reiterated on Monday that they were still behind their nominee, but House Speaker Paul Ryan said he would no longer be defending or appearing with Trump. Trump has also tried to gain leverage with accusations toward his opponent's husband, former President Bill Clinton. Ahead of Sunday's debate, he appeared with three women who had accused the former president of sexual assault or rape. And according to another Bloomberg News report on Wednesday night, he intends to double down on that strategy. This has nothing to do with consensual sexual affairs and infidelities. This is Bill. We're going to turn him into Bill Cosby. He's a violent sexual predator who physically abuses women who he assaults. And she takes the lead on the intimidation of the victims, Trump campaign CEO Steve Bannon told staffers, according to Bloomberg. Thank you for watching videos, you remember the likes and comments below, thanks.